Hi, so welcome to my run through of The Painted Rooms, um, which is my sister deck to The Painted Tarot. I have been fascinated by the runes since childhood, but I think in keeping with lots of other people, I never really got to grips with them because I was diverted by, by tarot and by other things and by life. Um, and more recently, I've been really wanting to uh, reconnect with them. And it's been really a joy to do that. And so I'm delighted to be able to uh, to share with you this little run through. And um, other people have, have run through the deck as well. And I'll, I'll share what they uh, what they've all said. Um, but uh, if it would be helpful, here we have some uh, insights from me. So, uh, the runes don't really have an official order in, or structure in the sense uh, of the tarot, but th there's a general consensus that they are divided into three groups of eight, called the atir. Now, these three groups of eight are loosely translated as Freya's eight, Heimdall's eight and Tears eight, mm, and Freya is the is the goddess of love, fertility, enjoyment, creation, family, and the physical realm. So the runes in her eight are very much associated with this. And when you're reading with with the runes, you can you can uh, read through this lens. Uh, he Heimdall's eight, which is sometimes called um, Hagal, Hagal's eight. Uh, reflect the warrior energy, really, uh, the spiritual warrior. Uh, it begins with Isa, which is the winter rune of standstill and ice, and it ends with Sowelo, which is basically the return of the sun and salvation. And it's full of challenge. I suppose you would say that um, Hagal's eight is full of challenge, so you could read those runes through that lens. And then finally, we have Tears eight, and Tyr is associated with the Sky God and uh, has an affiliation with Asgard, which was the home of the Norse gods. And in the context of the three eights, he, uh, he represents justice, spiritual achievement, atonement and the dawning of a new day. However, lots of people, myself included, just choose to use the runes um, as they come and not necessarily through these particular eights. I think it's useful to know about them, however, um, and I'm going to take you through them in, in this sequence. So first of all, we'll start with Freya's eight. So first of all, we have Fihu, which uh, loosely translates as nourishment or possessions and wealth. And there were originally two figures in this painting, but I, I took one of them out to symbolize that your your wealth and your inner value really is down to yourself. And this is what you'll find with the runic energies is that they're very much associated with um, the self's relationship to the self. If you are a tarot person, the tarot associations for this card, uh, Fihu, would be the six of coins, the six of wands, the nine of cups and the four of coins. So that gives you a little bit of insight into into how to read um, to read these cards, and in the booklet which goes with the the painted rooms, you will um, you will see these descriptions and you'll see the tarot associations, because uh, that helped me to, to reconnect with them. So I hope it will help you too. So we'll start with the run through now. So we've got Fihu, then we have Uruz, which is strength and often was uh, associated with an ox. I've done her in, in, a, um, in front of a full moon, a little bit, for me, a, bit, a little bit like the Eight of Cups. Um, so this kind of strength and moving on and um, obviously the tarot card strength as well. And there is an, an, an element of the High Priestess here as well. Then we have Thurizaz, which is where we get our word Thursday from. And this is called gateway or threshold in its translation. And the associations, uh, tarot wise, for me at any rate, were um, death, the hanged man, the five of wands, and the three of wands. So a real mixture of, you know, renewal and um, endings, new beginnings, and stepping through into a new journey, a new um, 
stepping out of your comfort zone, you could say. Then we have Anzus, which is loosely translated as signals, often seen as the messenger rune. This is a very spiritual rune, a uh, very exciting energy. Uh, you can see all of the, the signals and the um, information coming in and out of her mind here. And you could say the tarot associations are um, the High Priestess, again, the Eight of Wands, the Wheel of Fortune, I would say, is a real um, association with Anzus. Then we have Raidho, which is all about communication and um, a little bit of higher learning, higher wisdom. So you've got the Hierophant coming in. The hermit, maybe a little bit of spiritual reflection. You know, you can see this is the same person, kind of upside down. And the hanged man. Each card you'll see has the runic symbol uh, somewhere within it. And little bits of runic inscription are um, layered in and out. Then we have Kano, which is really... Um, the torch of, of the torch in the darkness or fire in the darkness and could also be described as an opening and um, it's a very powerful card of uh, kind of deep passion signified in this sort of lighting up of the darkness and things are opening up for you and um, yeah you you're metaphorically kind of sitting by the fire and whether that means you're destroying things or you're lighting things up I guess that depends on your situation the tarot associations for me would have been the six of wands, the sun and the chariot. Then we have Gibo, which is a rune of partnership, also seen as a gift. Um, you can see the gift here. This is like a kiss sign. It's an X sign. And the tarot associations, unsurprisingly, you would have the lovers and the two of cups. But you also might have the Queen and the King of Swords and the Ace of Swords because although they are deeply connected, these two, there is a gap and there is um, a, a sense of uh, independence that, that runs between them. So whatever it is you're wanting to partner up with or whoever it is, it's really important to keep a sense of yourself. Again, echoing that runic... Um, feature of self-development. And then we have the last of this uh, of Freya's eight is Wuncho, which is joy. Now she was originally the painting of Freya because before I did the, the runes proper, I painted the three gods that ruled the three Atiya. So this was actually the painting of Freya uh, herself. And there's, there's a lot of circular symbols in here to denote this sense of wholeness and and uh, fruition and joy and she really is a very um, joyful rune and her tarot associations are the three of cups the nine of cups the sun and temperance it's a very positive card of positive outcomes positive attitude um, and it completes Freya's eight uh, quite joyfully now we come on to Hagal's Eight or Heimdall's Eight and this this series um, really do tackle things that are more challenging. I suppose, you know, the equivalent in the tarot would be the swords element, a little bit more challenging, a little bit more cerebral, but then ending with, with uh, enlightenment as we get to the end. So it starts off with um, Hagalas. And this really is about disruption and challenge and elemental power. And I remember when I was painting this, it was I, I painted it very quickly, very um, chaotically. It, I really felt I was, you know, involved in this chaos of disruption. But from that, a bit like the tower, I suppose, um, in tarot worlds, uh, came this really exciting kind of movement and, and development of, of the painting. So um, it can sometimes represent things that are out with our control, but ultimately it's a, it's a great awakener, is this card. You can see the H is here, Hagalas. 
And the tarot associations would be the Tower, obviously, the Wheel of Fortune, the Ace of Swords and the Five of Wands. Then we have Nauthes. No, we don't. We have Ewas, which is Defence, um, which is all about keeping things, you know, close to your chest. And uh, the Tarot Associations would be the Page of Swords, Judgment and the Seven of Cups. So this idea of trying to understand any difficulty which is in your path and, you know, encourage, encouraging you to, to not grasp after anything too keenly. Um, you can see here that I've used a Raven's uh, Wing. And the defense symbol here. Then we have Isa, which is uh, the rune of the spiritual winter. And uh, Isa really is about going within and in the way that winter cuts us off sometimes from um, warmth and, you know, a sense of... of uh, fertility or anything like that it's actually just still in waiting it hasn't gone away it's just waiting so again we've got the hanged man as a tarot association and the hermit it's about trust i think isa as well but then after isa we have jera which is a rune of harvest there is sometimes a little bit of waiting associated with jera and it can mean one year as well there's a timing issue with jera and the tarot associations would be the the empress, the three of coins, um, remembering that community is an important issue, and the knight of coins. So again, this sense of things will come to fruition, but we just have to wait a little bit. Then we have Nauthis, which is a rune of constraint. And um, it's really about your shadow self, this one. And you can see again, I've used a raven's wing. Odin was very much, um, he, was the, he was the father of, of, of the gods and um, the Norse gods. And he was very much associated with the raven, which I'm sure you already know. So the tarot associations to Nathis are the devil, the nine of swords, the nine of wands and the two of swords. And it really talks to you about um, retreat and you know, a bit of lack of freedom going on. But it is also wonderful in, in helping you create that sense of self-reliance. Then we have Perth Row, or Perth, which is all about initiation. And it's a little bit of opening up after all of that difficulty. And you can see here that this symbol, the runic symbol, is, um, is, is next to her ear, so she's listening. She's listening to what she needs to be initiated into. In that sense, she's, a, she's quite like the High Priestess. And this was the first painting that I did in all of the runes. You can see this kind of smaller runic inscriptions. And it's like she's bursting out. She's bursting into this, this um, state of, of listening. And there's a kind of newness. The green is about the newness. Sometimes people say that this rune is... is uh, like hearing a secret. Then we move on to Algis, which is um, the elk. So you can see here I've taken that quite literally and I've put elk antlers on this figure. And um, it's a very protective rune and it does often remind us not to be too emotional in any given situation. And uh, really it's about keeping your strength and stamina um, and, and the survival instinct of the elk, actually, to be able to cope with any, uh, any battles or hurdles that you might encounter. And the tarot associations that I felt were, were um, in keeping with, with Algis were the Emperor and the King of Wands, all of the kings, in fact, and I would say the Six of Swords as well. There's a little bit of difficulty and challenge there, so... Then the final one of Hagal's eight is Sowelo, and it really does represent a return to the sun. So you've gone on a bit of a journey through Hagal's eight, and uh, 
This is Sawelo, which means wholeness or the sun. And it's really um, about coming back to yourself, coming home to yourself and recognizing that in some way you've had a spiritual cleansing or a purging of any lower energies and you're back to, to where you should be. And the tarot associations are the sun, the ace of coins, the four of wands and the three of wands. So it's a very positive card. Then we get on to the final atiyah um, of tier is eight, T-Y-R, the god Tyr. And um, we start off with Tiwaz, or Tyr himself. And I, had, I adapted this painting from the painting of, of Tyr. Um, as I was explaining before, I did a painting of each of the individual gods that rule the Atiyah. So this was, this was his one. And he really is the warrior. He's called Warrior. And this was often the symbol that was painted on uh, battles, uh, sorry, on weapons as they would go into battles. When the Vikings and pre-Vikings would go into battle, they would paint this. Um, and you can see he's got he's got a bit of blood staining here. Um, and you can also see his heart, which is really visible um, and pumping, you know, pumping with courage, pumping with um, stress, pumping with... Uh, bravery but also pumping with kindness and and love um, and in his hair we have here the, the uh, these symbols depict the sun and the moon and this sense of traveling very much associated with the masculine energy and you have to sometimes think about how are you showing up in terms of competition are you in competition with yourself or with anybody else and what does that really mean and the tarot associations are the chariot, the sun, the eight of swords, and the king of swords. Then we have Berkana, who um, is really associated with uh, the birch goddess and associated with rebirth. And you can hear and see, see in the background here that there are birch trees, which is a lot of flowers going on in her headdress and in her dress. And she's very, um, very much associated with the Empress. I suppose that would be the closest match in the tarot would be the Empress. And probably all of the Aces as well. Then we have Ewas, which uh, translates as movement or progress. And you can see here, you've got two horses, a black and a white horse, a little bit like the chariot. And, um, you know, it, it, it's about movement and, um, you know, transition and also about sharing your good fortune. If you are fortunate enough to have a good life and things that are, are, are going well for you, it's about sharing those things and keeping your focus. Then we have Manas which I've called, um, well, it's, the, uh, it's the rune of joy in mirror image, and I've called this shadow self, mirror self even, not shadow self, mirror self. And it really is, you know, a mirror to your soul, and it signifies working on yourself and committing to your own path. It speaks about dedication and urges you to stay in the present and remain receptive. And the tarot associations um, would be the alchemist and the hierophant and the hermit. Then we have Lagoos, which is associated with flow and water. And her tarot associations would be the star, the moon and the high priestess. She's a very spiritual rune of... Um, happy endings some people say and uh, very transformative and this fluidity of water uh, sometimes it can be contained and sometimes it's not but ultimately it's very very healing and cleansing this is Lagoos then we have Ingus which is fertility and new beginnings And it's, uh, it, it marks a time of new beginnings and harmony. 
but first of all you have to fertilize the soil and she's holding a bunch of flowers here to be presented out and she has these, these beautiful white swan wings as, as uh, her headdress and in a sense because she's completion and new beginnings she's a little bit like the world or the page of cups and a little bit of empress as well then we have Othala, Inheritance or Retreat. This is all about ancestry and honouring our ancestors. And um, de a departure from the old way, really. And you can see these curtains here. The, the, the figure is sort of, is she coming in? Is she going out? A little bit of an echo of Thurizaz, Gateway. Um, often it's connected to the concept of home. Um, but it also reminds us not to stick blindly to the plan if it's not working and not to be too rigid in your thinking. And the tarot associations are the moon, the four of wands, the six of cups, this idea of, of inheritance and, and childhood possibly, and temperance. And then we have the final rune, um, which is Dagaz which is really about breakthrough, a transformation, daylight. It's like breaking through into the light. You can see she's bursting through into her new life. So very much in keeping with the idea of the world being the last card in the tarot deck, Dagaz is the last card in the, um, the Tears 8. And, um, or possibly death as well, this idea of renewal. And it's a very important symbol in the runic cycle and it really does herald a major shift in any given situation. And uh, if the timing is right, then everything will flow as it should. And it's this idea of leaping into the next um, stage of your life with, with abandon. <laughs> now we get on to um, what I have done in place of the blank rune. A lot of runic decks, or runic stones I should say, have a blank rune. An opinion is divided on whether this was merely a um, an extra one in which to inscribe your own runic symbol if you lost one, or whether it was a rune of deep mystery. And I think I've really gone full circle on this, and I do think that it is a rune of great mystery. I originally painted three of these, um, and this was the one that I decided on. And drawing this rune really does indicate that uh, the workings of fate and significant things are at play in your life. It's a radical trust, to trust in yourself. Now the very, very final card in the whole deck is this new card called The Link. This is very much my own creation. And it stemmed from a desire to honour the ancient uh, female rune casters uh, who were originally working with runestones and symbols and to honour all of you out there who work in the spiritual realm and to help us all gain insight into um, the linkage between who we're reading for, um, ourselves and how we are reading, so whether that be through a deck or through stones or whatever. So the link can sit with you uh, as, a, as an aid to communication or she can be in the deck and you can attach your own meaning to her. So I hope you've enjoyed that run through of the Painted Runes and uh, it's available via my Etsy shop. I have £33 plus postage and packing or you can contact me directly and um, chat about it or I'd love to hear anything you've got to say. So thank you very much for watching and bye for now.